Okay, folks, let's let's look at these these other two questions here. Um, I'm going to get a whole new sheet. So this whole new sheet here, and we're going to look at just this obtuse scaling triangle. It's obtuse triangle because this one is greater than 90 degrees but less than 100. Um, now that we've we've looked at the concept that the area of a triangle is half the area of a rectangle, uh, let's just put that into straight practical use. So in this obtuse scaling one here, um, I'm going to have to take the area of my rectangle, which is the uh, base times height. And in this one, uh, it's a little tricky. Reasoning why this one works can be found in the video below. But we have to make sure we find the air, the length of the base. And that's the base right here. So remember that's base. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 5. I have to multiply by the height. Now let's be very careful. We have to make sure we don't use the side of the triangle, but we use the height of the triangle. And the height of the triangle is going to be the same as the height of the rectangle. So if I just draw a rectangle around this one, we can see that the height of a rectangle is not the same as the side of the triangle. So over here, uh, we know that the base and the height of a rectangle is always found at a 90 degree angle. And so over here, I have the base of my triangle, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the height of my triangle, which is 1, 2, 3. Uh, and three here. Now, some of you may be asking, well, Ms. Pate, why aren't you using this part right there for the base? Remember, the explain why that one's not included is found in the video below. But now that I have the area of my triangle, my rectangle, which is going to be 15, remember, I need half of it. So I need half of that, which is 7.5, okay? Um, and that's, that's how we use it practically. However, sometimes, maybe over here, this one, we like, oh, well, the base, well, I don't know how long that is. I don't know how I, I don't know how long that is. I I can't count the number of squares. Well, what we can do is we can use some um, composing and decomposing of shapes. Just like my other three triangles over here, what I can do is I can actually draw in a large rectangle, a large rectangle, and within this large rectangle, hopefully we can see we actually have not one, not two, not three but four triangles inside this large rectangle. And in order to find the area of this one here, here, I can find the area of the entire thing and then take away area of triangle one, two, and three. Right? And look at that, four triangles, one, two, and three. I can see I have a base of one and a height of one, two, three, four. This one has a base of two and a height of one, two, three, four. This one has a base of two and a height of one, two, three, four, five. So I can use my understanding of uh, rec triangles as half the area of a rectangle, so half the base times height. So for uh, rectangle one, that's going to be half of my base of one times my height of four. Uh, for rectangle two, I'm going to have half of my base of 2 times my height of 4. And then for my rectangle 3, I can have half of my base of 2 and my height of 5. So here, half of 4, well, that's going to be 2. For, for triangle 2, I have half of, all this is together is 8, so that's going to be a total of 4. And this is half of 10, so all that together can be 5. So triangles 1, 2, and 3 all add up together is going to be a total of 11. So I, if I find the entire area and I take away a total of 1, 2, 3, a total of 11, I can find the area of what's left over. So of course the area of this entire thing is my base times my height, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4. So my area of the entire thing is base times height, which can also be thought of length times width. So a total of 5 times 4, which is 20. 20 take away 11, so that means I have 9. The area of this one here is 9. And there you have it. We can use our understanding of half base times height to find up to scaling. And we can also find irregular ones like this, build shapes around it, and then take away spaces that we don't need. And we can find the shapes of, or the area of many different shapes if we can think of shapes being composed and decomposed of other simple shapes. 
just like how we do with our friendly numbers. Anyways, I uh, hope this helps and I'll catch you in the next one.